Hi, this is Chris Long and I'm just uh, presenting a new slide guide that I made on how you can set up your student teacher in Canvas and uh, make it the most efficient, friendly way to um, set it up for the student teacher so that the student teacher um, can do their thing without affecting your courses and you can do your thing without affecting the student teacher's courses as well. So having a student teacher, um, from my experience, has been one of the most rewarding experiences of my career. But the problem is it can also be a lot of extra work and it can be daunting at times, especially at the beginning of the school year. Uh, but it's really critical uh, to get our student teachers off to a good launch and a good start and hopefully headed in the right direction. So hopefully these slides will help you um, make this process easier and you'll find this beneficial and, and more importantly um, your student teacher will will be more successful as a result. If you do run into any problems or find any um, errors in these slides please let me know and you can email me at, at clong at hbohsd.edu. So in Canvas with student teachers we found that there's basically two options that we can come up with uh, for adding them to your courses. Uh, one, you can add them as a TA, and that's pretty simple. You can just go to your course that the school has uh, set up for you already, and you can click on People, and then you can uh, add a person, and you would use their um, email address to add them, and then they're in your course as a uh, TA or a teacher. Um, but what they do in your course will populate to other sections if they're not careful. I know they can use the differentiated assignment feature to, to kind of not do that, but if they're going to be doing a lot of that uh, and you want them to have more anonymity uh, in ownership, I would encourage you to use option number two, which would be to create a separate course for them. So you're going to create a course yourself for them, and then we're going to move those sections that they're teaching into that new course. So before we do this process, and it's called cross-listing, um, the situation is like one of two things usually. Um, on the right we have a student teacher with all sorts of questions. They're locked out of the system entirely and they're frustrated. They don't know what to do. On the left we have the student teacher trying to work under the master teacher with all these courses linked together in the same course. And it's not really ideal what we want to see after this process is something that looks like this. Here we have uh, a teacher. They've got uh, period three and four of CP English three that they're teaching and that's the master teacher, David. And over here we also have the master teacher in here as a teacher, um, but the student teacher as well is in here. Notice the smile. And they have access to just their periods five and six and uh, it's a much better situation and then there's a wall kind of between these two courses. Uh, if you'd like you can also add your your student teacher as an observer in your class uh, period three and four that you're teaching so they can uh, look at what you're doing and maybe um, get ideas to put in their course or you could add them as a TA there as well um, so that they can import officially uh, content from that course to their course that we're going to set up. Before we get going, I want to give you some general warnings on cross-listing. Um, number one, uh, the enrollments for the sections are moved, but not the course content or grades. Uh, so just enrollments, just people, in other words, uh, mainly students that we're talking about and observers linked to those students. Um, because of that, this is best done early in the semester. Uh, I, I usually do not recommend cross-listing after two weeks um, into school unless you're absolutely starting from uh, ground zero. Uh, this process can be undone, but assignment submissions and grades uh, in the content are not moved back to the original course um, automatically when this is done. And uh, because of that, this can be really difficult to recover. Uh, if you ever are in that situation, my tip before you uncross list or, or decross list is to uh, download your gradebook first and be sure to click on this link if you um, don't know how to do that. All right, so let's get going. Uh, before we make the jump, 
we want to be mindful of a couple of things. Number one, does your student teacher have a school assigned uh, email address? Uh, two, does your student teacher have a school assigned Canvas account? And, and lastly, three, uh, hopefully they know their passwords to and logins to all these accounts above. Uh, if not, um, for our school district, um, we communicate that through the uh, AP of guidance in charge of um, our student teachers um, and our HR department. All right, so there's basically general, generally um, here two steps that we're going to create. Um, the first is we're going to create a new course for our student teacher and then lastly uh, we're going to move our our sections into the new course so a two-part process so let's get started here so we're in our dashboard view um, and we're going to start up a new course so look for the start a new course button on the right when you're in dashboard view of canvas click on the button and we're going to start a start a new course we're going to give the course a name uh, when you give the course a name I recommend uh, keeping the official name that the school has named the course with and in parentheses adding uh, the student teachers last name so you can easily distinguish which course is which in your dashboard view uh, when you're ready to proceed uh, click create a course. The short name is up to you and, and, and it's up to you um, what you would select for kite content license and whether or not to make the course publicly visible to people who are not enrolled in the course. Alright, if you've created your brand new course it should look like this when you uh, splash into it and uh, just that's your welcome page to your brand new course. So far we're right on track. Next, we're going to go to the People tab over on the left, and we are going to add a person with the plus People button, and we are going to add our student teacher. Uh, and I want to clarify that don't add them as a teacher. I recommend adding them as a TA. If you add them as a teacher, they can remove you from your own course here. Uh, which may be a problem and then they can also inadvertently or purposely delete the course which wouldn't be good uh, so TA is the best for for student teachers and they they can do everything they need to as a TA we found so um, when you do this uh, you're gonna use their school assigned uh, Gmail address or email address that's connected to their canvas account so they have to have that before you can add them uh, select TA. You don't need to worry about can grade students in their own section only so um, leave that unchecked. Hit next. Uh, it's going to if, if the student has if the student teacher has an email address it's going to find them and it's going to say that they're actually in our system and it and you get a validation message. Uh, hopefully that's the case if not you'll you'll need to check on the email address and why they don't have a Canvas account perhaps. Um, anyway, click on Add Users, uh, click Done, and now you are in um, that course and you can see that the student teacher has a pending invitation for getting into that course. Uh, next you're going to click on the URL of the course, if you double click on the number, usually it's a five digit number, double click on that, it should highlight, and then you want to copy it. Uh, for Windows you can use Control C, for Mac you can use Command C, uh, or you can just write this number down. We're going to need that for our second step. Okay, our second step, speaking of which, uh, we're going to cross list our sections to the new course that you just made for your student teacher. All right, before we do that, a little tip um, about starring. If you go to courses and then click on view all courses from the left there, uh, you'll see a page that looks like this. And most people, probably they're all gray stars. Uh, if you want to control exactly what you see in your dashboard in my courses, star them. 
Uh, all you have to do is click on a gray star and it makes it gold. Unclick or click again and it makes it um, gray. So the ones that you star you will see unless you haven't starred anything and then you're just going to see all active courses. All right, so going back to our dashboard view, we see the master course there that we, that we the school made for us, CP English 3A. And what we ultimately want to do is move uh, period five and six. Those are the, those are the periods um, my, the student teacher is going to be teaching into the new course we created, which you see in red there. Uh, and so what we're going to do to get started is we're going to click on the CP English 3A. Click right on that name. We're right there. We want to go down to settings. So click on settings. And then we'll, we want to click on the sections tab. And then when we do that, we'll see all the sections or periods of this course that have been set up for us. And so I'm just going to move period five section right now. So click on period five to cross list it. Notice there's a cross list this section button. We want to click on that. And then here is where that magic uh, pasting of the, the number and the URL comes into play. Either you wrote it down or you still have it in, on, on your clipboard on your computer, but you want to click into that cell where it says or enter the course's ID number and paste the number in there. And then once you do that, this is super important, and this is where a lot of people get stuck, hit the tab button. You want to teach like a pirate, hit the tab. Um, and now you should see that the selected course comes up with um, the name that you gave it. And if that looks right, then we can hit the cross list this section um, button. And another congrats, we've just successfully cross listed the section. All right, now note, you are now in the course that you cross-listed it into. It automatically puts you in there. This is the course that you made for your student teacher. And you can see that by the number. The number is the same up there in the URL. Um, basically, all you have to do after this is your student teacher will, next time they log into Canvas, they'll see a little notification up there that looks like this. You have been invited to join a certain, certain class. They need to accept it. And then they're in the class. They're ready to go. Um, they can publish the course whenever they'd like and they they have control but you're also in there and you can see what's going on at any time that you need to uh, if, if you need to do this process again for let's say period six you would just go right back over to your CP English course um, and then go into the settings then go to the section find period six click on it and cross list it into this course again um, there's some questions maybe what if what if my um, student teacher is also teaching the same course but with another master teacher during a different period if that is the case um, let's say the first master teacher sets everything up they they put their sections and in, cross-listed into the new course that they create and then they could add the second master teacher into the new course that they created too as a teacher. And then the second master teacher would be able to follow these instructions and cross list their course uh, section into the new course that was made. Uh, the key is if you want to cross list, you have to be a teacher uh, and have permissions in both courses, the one that you're coming from and the one that you're moving to. Uh, in order to successfully do it. Um, there's a lot of other resources on this. Uh, you can Google it, but uh, the Canvas guides have a lot of uh, good click-by-click -click resources. A great discussion in uh, the Canvas community on um, the pros and cons of cross-listing uh, with the multiple course qu question. And uh, then, of course, um, we have another slide guide that was done on just combining two or more courses in Canvas that might be of use. Hopefully uh, you have a great year and this, this uh, guide helps you get started and your student teacher is rocking it in the Canvas. <laughs>